But there was an excellent piece in a publication or a site called lawandcrime.com that didn't get the credit it deserved, and a lot of people plagiarized from it, in my opinion, by a gentleman by the name of Robert Barnes. I don't know who Robert Barnes is, but he's a sharp dude. He's a California-based trial lawyer, focused on constitutional law, criminal and civil rights, and blah, blah. But he wrote it at 8.02 a.m. on February 17th. He wrote, Special Counsel Robert Mueller indicted foreign citizens for trying to influence the American public about an election because those citizens did not register as foreign agents nor record their financial expenditures to the Federal Elections Commission. By that theory, when will Robert Mueller indict Christopher Steele, Fusion GPS, Perkins Coy, the DNC, and the Clinton campaign? Follow this. Mueller's indictment against 13 Russian trolls claimed their social media political activity was criminal because they were foreign citizens, they tried to influence an election, and they neither registered under the Foreign Agents Registration Act nor reported their funding to the Federal Elections Commission. First, if Mr. Mueller's theory is correct, three things make Christopher Steele a criminal. First, He is a foreign citizen. Second, he tried to influence an election, which he received payments to do, including from the FBI itself. And third, he neither registered as a foreign agent, nor listed his receipts and expenditures to the Federal Election Commission. Also, according to the FBI, along the way, still lied. A lot. Well, the dossier he disseminated contained its contained its own lies based on bought and paid for smears from foreign sources relying on rumors and innuendo. Second, if Mueller's theory is correct, three things make Fusion GPS a criminal co-conspirator. It knew Steele was a foreign citizen. It knew and paid Steele to influence an election. And it knew and facilitated Steele, neither registering as a foreign agent nor reporting his funding, from the DNC and the Clinton campaign to the FEC. Third, if Mueller's theory is correct, then three things make Perkins Coy, the law firm, a potential target. It knew Steele was a foreign citizen. It knew and paid Steele to influence an election. And it knew and facilitated Steele, neither registering as a foreign agent, nor reporting his influence, uh, excuse me, his funding from the DNC and the Clinton campaign to the FEC. Fourth, I'm trying to get through this. If Mueller's theory is correct, then three things make the DNC a potential target. This is very important, folks. It knew Steele was a foreign citizen. It knew and paid Steele to influence an election. It knew and facilitated Steele, neither registering as a foreign agent, nor reporting his funding from the DNC and the Clinton campaign to the FEC. Fifth, if Mueller's theory is correct, three things make the Clinton... (coughs) All right, I'll just shoot straight with you. I have terrible asthma right now. He was brought on by the flu, and I'm trying to get into a pulmonologist today. I'll get into a pulmonologist tomorrow. Just is what it is. I apologize, but uh, we continue to plow ahead here. (coughs) You know, I'm not supposed to say anything, but it's obvious, isn't it? But the, uh, the lawyer goes on. Don't expect any of these indictments. Mueller chose his targets because he knows they will never appear in court. And this is something I mentioned on Friday. Never contest the charges and cannot be arrested or extradited as Russian citizens. Mueller's unprecedented prosecution raises three novel arguments. First, that speaking out about American politics requires a foreign citizen to register under the Foreign Agents Registration Act. Second, that speaking out about American politics requires a foreign citizen list their source and expenditure of funding to the FEC. And third, that mistakes on visa applications constitute fraud on the State Department. All appear to borrow from the now discredited honest services theories Mueller's team previously used in corporate and bribery cases, cases the Supreme Court overturned for their unconstitutional vagueness. Now, I particularly like what this gentleman wrote because I said essentially the same thing on Friday. 
This is a bogus case. These 13 indictments are of serious constitutional um, doubt. Serious constitutional doubt. And moreover, they'll never see the light of day because these people will never be brought into American courts. They're operating out of Russia. And as I also pointed out Friday, they try to interfere with our election and we bring phony indictments. Is that what Mueller has? Is that where Mueller is? No. He's trampsing around looking for other laws because there's so many laws out there. Financial laws, tax laws. He's looking for whatever he can to smear as many people around Trump as he possibly can. To break them financially. To ruin them publicly with leaks to the media. This is what he and this guy Weissman and all these other clowns are known for. In order to... uh, to get some scalps, whether they deserve it or not. That's what's going on here. It's an absolute miscarriage of justice. And Rod Rosenstein is a buffoon. I watched him. He is a quintessential bureaucratic hack. How he became Deputy Attorney General, who recommended him, I will never know. Because he's part of the same crowd, part and parcel of the same mentality. He gave that press release. He was so excited. He's telling about all the front groups and the these groups and the that groups. Oh, so what? You want to deal with Russian interference in our election? Then you commit acts of cyber warfare against them. And to show you what a coward Rod Rosenstein is. To show you what a coward this guy Mueller is. To show you what cowards all those prosecutors are. Notice who they didn't indict with one of their phony indictments. Vladimir Putin, who's behind it all. Why didn't they indict him? They keep talking about indicting Trump, obstruction of justice. What's with these tough guys? They're not tough guys, they're buffoons. They're morons. With incredible power. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. If this guy Mueller takes action against the president or doesn't take action but uses the phrase obstruction of justice against the president to serve as a basis for impeachment and so forth, there are going to be tens of millions of us who are not going to take that sitting down. We're just not. We can't tolerate a silent coup. I see the same thing going on in Israel. 